Come, you blessed by my Father, says the Lord. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers, you did it to me. Today is the memorial of St. Maximilian Kolbe, priest and martyr of our church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. But dear friends, in order to worthily celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sex. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who feel the priest and martyr, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary, and with a seal for souls and love of neighbor, graciously grant that through his intercession, that striving for your glory, be eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. says the Lord God to Jerusalem. By origin and birth, you are of the land of Cain. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. As for your birth, the day you were born, your navel cord was not cut, nor were you washed with the water, nor anointed. Nor were you loved with the salt, nor swathed in swaddling clothes. No one looked on you with pity or compassion to do many of these things to you. Rather, you were thrown out on the ground as something loathsome the day you were born. Then I passed by and saw you swallowing in your blood. I said to you, live in your blood and grow like a plant in the field. You grew and developed. You became to the age of puberty. Your breasts were fall, Your hair had grown. But you were still stark naked. Again, I passed by you and saw that you were now old enough to love. So I spread the corner of my cloak to cover you, your nakedness. I swore an oath to you and entered into the covenant with you. You became mine, says the Lord God. Then I bathed you with water, washed away your blood, and anointed you with oil. I clothed you with an embroidered cloth. Put sandals of fine leather on your feet. I gave you a fine linen sash and silk robes to wear. I adorned you with jewelry. I put bracelets on your arms, a necklace about your neck, a ring in your nose, 
pendants in your ears, and a glorious diadem upon your head. Thus, you were adorned with gold and silver. Your garments were of fine linen, silk, and embroidered cloth. Fine flour, honey, and oil were your food. You were exceedingly beautiful with the dignity of a queen. You were renowned among nations for your beauty, perfect as it was. Because of my splendor, which I have bestowed on you, says the Lord God. But you were captivated by your own beauty. You used your renown to make yourself a harlot. And you lavished your harlotry on every passerby whose own you became. Yet I will remember the covenant I made with you when you were a girl. And I will set up an everlasting covenant with you that you may remember and be covered with confusion, and that you may be utterly silent for shame when I pardon you for all you have done, says the Lord God. The word of the Lord. My response, you have turned from your anger. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy, He will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord and claim His name. Among the nations, make known His deed. Proclaim how exalted is His name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exaltation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Alleluia, alleluia. Receive the word of God, not as the word of men, but it is truly it is the word of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Some Pharisees approached Jesus and tested him, saying, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any cause whatever? He said in reply, Have you not read from the beginning? The Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, man must not separate. They said to him, Then why did Moses command that man give the woman a bill of divorce and dismiss her? He said to them, Because of the hardness of your hearts. Moses allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning is what it was not so. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, the marriage one commits adultery. His disciples said to him, If that is the case of a man with his wife, it is better not to marry. He answered, Not all can accept this word, but only those to whom it is granted. Some are incapable of marriage because they were born so some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage.
for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. If we will discern our gospel today, though it centralizes more about marriage, we could also see in the different perspectives the teachings of Jesus, not only about marriage, but also in our interpersonal relationship. Yesterday's gospel talks about dialogue, forgiveness, and our own way of appreciating the graciousness of God. And by that, we are able to reflect about how vast is the love of God. And with that, doing so, we are able to also exercise the way God exercised our love before Him. And thus, in our merit in our gospel today, leads us to this kind of disposition. Jesus tries to confront those who were asking him, especially the Pharisees regarding marriage. They wanted to challenge the thought of Jesus. They wanted him to ask him concerning what were the prophets was talking about before, regarding divorce and separation. But Jesus stood in the main basic principle of our Christian faith, that the love of God is eternal, and thus our also profession of love for each other is also eternal. And this is always what we thought to our dear children and to those who are getting married. We would always encourage them, what if you have to go to the church? and have your marriage blessed in church. Some people, especially this, the modern times, there are lots of couples who would just say, oh, it's just simply good to marry in the civil rights, and um, because it's difficult to get married in the church, because there are a lot of things to consider. And some people would say, even in the Philippines, would say, Father, we won't get married in the church because it is expensive. I think this concept is not true because, you know, when getting married, it could also be a simple ceremony. They thought of a while that getting married in the church tells a lot of things to do. But if we will look into it based on what the Lord Jesus will tell us, we in our own very hearts, living the love of God, professing the eternal love of God, we always see marriage not just simply a contract, but it is our covenant before God. We stood in front of the altar of God to profess our own very love, and with that, we are able to make this covenant with God to love one another as he has loved us. And also today we celebrate this great feast also of reminding us of St. Maximilian Kolbe. In the modern times, we seldom see martyrs of his own. In 1941, Maximilian offered his life for the sake of the family who was able to be literally injected during those times in the concentration camp, but he sacrificed himself for the sake of his family. Maximilian is also propagator of the missionaries of the Immaculate Conception. He loved the Blessed Mother, and because of this, it has been said in his own particular life, he was thinking about two crowns, the crown of martyrdom and the crown of loving the Blessed Mother and His faith. My dear friends, today let us all together pray to the loving God that we may be able to truly explore and live His love before us. 
the eternal love of Christ to all of us, the eternal love of God to His church, as we profess this in our daily to daily relationships. We pray for all the marriages in the world. We pray for all the families. We pray also on the way we love one another, the way Jesus has loved us. Husband and wife share in God's creation of new life. Our intercession today centered around the needs of parents and children. That the church may effectively teach its members the true dignity of marriage and help couples to stay together in their sacred call. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That government leaders and legislators may enact laws and policies that build families rather than destroy them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That families broken by divorce or separation may find support and understanding from people in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those experiencing difficulties in their marriage may receive the grace to persevere in their commitments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That deceased relatives and friends may have the joy and peace in God's eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Charles Donaldson, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the names and petitions within our book of prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Silently, we present our petitions to the Lord. God of love, you created us, male and female, to continue your work of creation. May our love for one another reflect your indwelling presence. We ask this, Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of our creation, for the goodness we have this bread we offer you, which is this given, and human hands have made, will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for the goodness we have this wine we offer you, for the vine and rig of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual food. Pray, my dear brethren, my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. 
We present our oblations to you, o Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our every lives to you, to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Maximilian, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness to Christ our Lord. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord, and the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At a time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it, gave it to his Disciples say, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the poop of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and shores forever, and ever. Amen. At a Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, honored as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. Let by the help of your mercy be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Your friends, we offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
follow Christ, sanctify me, let a Christ in me, let a Christ in me. Let us pray. <clears throat> we pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that Saint Maximilian received from his holy banquet to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now pray to our dear Mother during this time of pandemic. O Holy Virgin of Guadalupe, Queen of the Angels and Mother of the Americas, we fly to you today as your beloved children. We ask you to intercede for us with your Son as you did at the wedding in Cana. Pray for us, loving Mother, and gain for our nation and the world, for all our families and loved ones, the protection of your holy angels that we may be spared the worst of this illness. For those already afflicted, we ask you to obtain the grace of healing and deliverance. Hear the cries of those who are vulnerable and fearful. Wipe away their tears and help them to trust. In this time of trial and testing, teach all of us in the church to love one another and to be patient and kind. Help us to bring the peace of Jesus to our land and to our hearts. We come to you with confidence, knowing that you truly are our compassionate mother health of the sick and cost of our joy. Shelter us under the mantle of your protection. Keep us in the embrace of your arms. Help us always to know the love of your Son. Jesus, Amen. The Lord be with you. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Holy Mass has been offered we now go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks. Thanks.